Everybody loves a good Mr. Beast last to leave challenge. And in this video, we're gonna discuss how some of the contestants could win literally any of these challenges by using a little psychological trick. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them to improve our own mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. All right, so yeah, we're gonna be discussing uh, how somebody could use psychology to win a Mr. Beast challenge. But the goal of my videos is always to help you, the viewer out, all right? So this will wrap around to see how you might be able to use some psychological tricks to help you accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. So anyways, Mr. Beast, this dude has exploded and I don't need to teach you about that because you already know, baby. But anyways, uh, I actually got to meet Mr. Beast last year at Vid Summit. It was crazy, it was about a year ago from around this time, I think it was last October and I was just, oh, I was blown away because uh, Shane Dawson used one of my clips in his Mind of Jake Paul series and Mr. Beast actually saw my big silly face. So anyways, met that dude, super cool. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he does all these last to leave challenges and everything like that. And yeah, let's discuss how somebody could win using a little bit of psychology. So we're going to be talking about the psychology and then blend in a little bit of neuroscience when it comes to something called loss aversion, okay? This is a very, very powerful force in the mind. So we have two driving forces as humans, just two. We think we're really complicated, but we just, we only have two, all right? We have attraction and aversion, all right? We like things that feel good. We wanna push away things that feel bad, right? I think about all of the bad habits and behaviors that we have that we do just to avoid not feeling bad, feeling lonely, depressed, anxious, bored, whatever it is, sad, lonely, whatever, all right? So anyways, what they found through psychology is how loss aversion is like a major aspect of this. Because you would think, so in the context of Mr. Beast challenges, right? Like giving them, you know, like $20,000, like thousands of dollars, right? That is a good motivation, but that's actually not true. We are actually more motivated to avoid losses than we are to go after potential gains, all right? Think about that for a second. We are more likely to try to avoid losses than we are to chase after potential gains. So to kind of summarize what that means is losing feels worse than the good feeling you get when you win, all right? So think about it, why do we do anything? Why do you get up, go to work? Why do you, you know, participate in any contest? Why does, you know, Mr. Beast contestants, you know, join aside from, you know, it's fun, but <laughs> to win money, right? And like, that seems like a pretty powerful motivation or you, you might be going to work every day to make money and everything to feel good, all right? But we are more driven to avoid feeling bad. So they've actually done some neurological studies with this as well. So here is a little snippet from a Scientific America article, which I will link down in the description below. But anyways, listen to this study. So what causes us to be more sensitive to losses? In 1979, psychologists Amos Zversky and Daniel Kahneman developed a successful behavioral model called prospect theory using the principles of loss aversion to explain how people assess uncertainty. More recently, psychologists and neuroscientists have uncovered how loss aversion may work on a neural level. In 2007, my colleagues and I found that brain regions that process value and reward may be silenced more when we evaluate a potential loss than they are activated when we assess a similar sized gain. So. Real quick, um, basically the good feelings we get, there are different neurotransmitters in our brain. You've probably heard of like dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, and things like that. So what they did was they did a study, hooked people up to see how much their brain activated with the good feelings compared to 
what their brain looked like with the bad feelings, all right? So here's a little bit more from that article. Perhaps most interesting, the reactions in our subjects' brains were stronger in response to possible losses than to gains, a phenomenon we dubbed neural loss aversion. We also found that individuals displayed varying degrees of sensitivity to loss aversion, and these wide-ranging neural responses predicted differences in their behavior. For instance, people with stronger neural sensitivity to both losses and gains were more risk averse. So, now that we know a little bit about loss aversion and how it affects us on a neurological level, what could Mr. Beast contestants do to help give them an edge in one of these last to leave challenges? I can think of two different options and maybe you can give me some ideas down in the comments below as well. But one of them, would be actually putting some of your own money on the line, all right? So think about being a contestant and putting your own money on the line. So it's not even just, oh, I can potentially win this, but worrying about losing the money you put out on out there, right? But then I was thinking, like, after I thought about that, I'm like, okay, but Mr. Beast has a large kid audience, and I don't want to endorse gambling, because that's kind of like betting, you know what I mean? But it is something that would help motivate the contestants. So the other option I was thinking about is this. And this is something I believe that we should all really think about on a regular basis, is thinking about how, how valuable our time is. So if you could switch your mindset during one of these Mr. Beast challenges, rather than, oh, if I stay here, I'm going to win X amount of dollars, switching that mindset to, if I lose, I just lost X amount of time, all right? You see what I mean? And when I was thinking about that with this loss aversion, think about relationships. Something I've discussed in videos where, you know, I ask people, how many of you have stayed in a relationship way longer than you should have? And a lot of people say they have, right? And I think part of that is loss aversion as well because our time is valuable. A lot of people will stay in a relationship because they think about how much time they've already invested and they don't want to lose that. So maybe that could help with a Mr. Beast challenge. But how does this help you? Well, let me tell you about another study they did based on loss aversion. So they took, they took some groups of smokers, all right? So they had one group and they called this the reward group. And they told anybody in that group, if they didn't smoke for six months, they would win $800. Now, these are not Mr. Beast levels of cash, but for people like you and me, $800 is pretty sweet, all right? So after six months, the reward group, 17%, 17% of those people did not smoke and they got their $800. But what was interesting was the other group, which they called the deposit group, okay? So this group, it was a little bit different. They found people who agreed to put in $150. And if they smoked during that six month period, they lost that $150. But if they stayed smoke free for six months, they got an extra $650, which would equal $800 total. Now in that group, compared to the other group, which was only 17%, 52% of these people stayed smoke-free for six months, all right? Because that is how powerful loss aversion is. So another quick example about how this might help you in your regular life. Um, I've heard about loss aversion a million times just because I'm a big psychology nerd and everything, but I'm reading this brand new book that came out a month ago called Indistractable, which I highly, highly recommend. It'll be linked down in the description if you want to check it out. But anyways, the author of this book, he he's done different things to motivate himself and he suggests things to you, the reader, or me, the reader, right? And he wanted to go to the gym more often. So he set up this, he calls it the burn or burn strategy, all right? so. He has a schedule to go to the gym. So he has a $100 bill that's sitting right next to a lighter, okay? And he calls it the burn or burn strategy because if he doesn't go to the gym, he has to burn that $100 bill, which is insane. <laughs> so he says since he's implemented this strategy, like he's lost quite a bit of fat, he's gained quite a bit of muscle because he's stuck to that regimen because loss aversion is so powerful, 
all right? So anyways, I, I love doing videos like this. Um, I asked you guys the other day when I did a video about James Charles and I blended in some psychology and philosophy and everything like that. I had some good feedback. So I wanna start doing this because I absolutely love psychology. So I wanna take things from pop culture and kind of blend them in and see what we can learn from them. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in other ways, like buying merch or the books I've written and all that kind of stuff. You are all amazing. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.